Well, heading into the weekend, things are getting very stormy across the country. We've got a couple of weather systems moving through the west. It's bringing snow and rain here. And we already have winter storm watches posted for parts of North Texas, even into Oklahoma, not quite to Oklahoma City. You can see here on the National Weather Service map, uh, you can head over to weather.gov and get your warnings and alerts there. Make sure you always check that out to make sure you are updated with the latest information. But at the time of this video recording, winter storm warnings back into New Mexico, southern parts of Colorado, even the far western counties here of Oklahoma, really the western county, and then also the far northwest county of Texas under a winter storm warning. Wouldn't be surprised if these get upgraded i think the issue is kind of like me i'm not exactly sure how much snow we'll see that confidence not quite there to throw the warnings out from the national weather service but you'll want to pay attention again over the next 24 hours to see if these get upgraded but if you tuned in yesterday i talked about this area here as being an area to watch and clearly the national weather service seeing the very same thing and they have upgraded these areas to those winter storm watches north atlantic oscillation staying negative over the next couple of weeks also the arctic oscillation i'm not going to spend time on this but i want to show you we are in a stormy pattern Pattern. Now, over the next couple of days, we're going to be tracking this upper low here. It's really a trough, but it kind of gets cut off in some ways. It's looking a little stronger than it has the last couple of days. This is actually the GFS, but we're going to actually take a look at the European surface map. I think that's important. We're going to go ahead and flip over to that because as this storm moves to the north and east, you know, the last couple of days, I've kind of been trash talking the GFS because it has went north, 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 south, 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 then it just trended north, north, north. It's all over the place. The European has been pretty solid on the forecast of this, and I feel pretty good about this, other than I think it might be a little bit too far south, maybe. But the heaviest snow, I'm feeling very strong, and I felt this way yesterday, even after looking at today's models, that we're still looking at southern New England, that so we're talking about Massachusetts, Connecticut, over into southern New York. Don't know if we get all the way down to New York City, possibly northwest New Jersey, and then into parts of northeastern Pennsylvania, back into the Poconos, towards Scranton, uh, and then some lighter amounts back through Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois as the system moves through. So let's look first at this heavy snow into Oklahoma. The European, not nearly as bullish as the latest NAM model. I mean, it starts to go just gangbusters here in North Texas. Now remember, uh, I don't think that this is a forecast. That's what I said. This is just model data that I use and meteorologists use to analyze what's going on. And it's the reason that they've issued those winter storm watches. This is going to change from model run to model run. So this is the model run right now, the 18Z. This was the run from earlier today at noon. Clearly a lot lighter. And see this uncertainty here from basically central Oklahoma East. That's probably why we don't have those winter storm watches just yet. And look, this was the early morning run. Still though, that North Texas area, that it looks to be the most favorable area of all the models to see heavy snow. So they're feeling good enough to go ahead and throw those watches out warnings again further back to the north and west. So snow looking likely in these areas more and more. The GFS in this area I feel is pretty close. It may be a little bit too far south, so I think it needs to jog a little bit further to the north. And that's why I think the NAM placement looks good. The GFS, again, may be a little too far to the south. So now I would go with the NAM as far as placement of that snow goes. I don't think we're going to see 24 inches. You may have seen that there. You may be getting excited, but the idea is there could be enough rapid vertical motion in the atmosphere as that upper low moves through. And it looks like a pretty robust piece of energy too. So I wouldn't be so shocked if we get a quick burst of snow and that could drop some pretty good numbers here across the northern panhandle of Texas. And look, I don't think we're out of the woods just because Oklahoma City doesn't have winter storm watches. Pay attention to this. That upper low could surprise you and drop a quick, decent amount of snow. So the timing of this would be heading into Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, and then Sunday night into early Monday morning for parts of Missouri, and then maybe even parts of Indiana and Illinois. I don't know that we get cold enough to see snow here, this right here, again, is something to keep an eye on, but the heaviest snow looks like it's going to be to your north and your east. A lot of rain, though, moving through the south and the mid-south. So from the mid-Atlantic all the way down to the southeast, we've got heavy rain at times, maybe even a few thunderstorms. And then our low will rapidly intensify as it moves toward the coast. Now, this is the GFS. I think it's way too far to the south. I just don't believe anything that this has to say. The European ensembles have been very consistent, and so has the European operational. So let's back it up. I, I felt pretty good with the GFS until it got to the coast. The European, I like this look. I think it actually might be a little too far south here, especially as it deepens off the coast. Once it hits the coast, you get those height levels dropping. You've got the cold air here, but I think back across West Virginia behind the system, we will definitely see some upslope snow showers with the synoptic lift or the lift of the system as it moves through. I think the best case will be from central Pennsylvania, north of that. Philadelphia, right in here, even on the European, it's mostly rain over to some snow at the end. I don't even know if we see that. 
at this point, this could literally jog north by 50 miles and we've changed the entire look here. At the same time, it could hold steady. No winter storm watches are up at the time of this recording because there is so much uncertainty. So if I had to make a forecast again, I would say that this might be a little too far to the south. The heaviest snow that I feel confident about, again, right here from Boston, Western Massachusetts, Central Connecticut, Bristol, Connecticut, Hartford, Windsor Locks, the western parts of Connecticut, Danbury, probably so, and to Western New York, I would say south of Albany, you get head back toward the mountains and snow really starts to pick up, especially when you get back into the Poconos. You get up in elevation, clearly you'll see more snow here. But another thing to keep in mind, while there's not a lot of cold air here, this is going to be a rapidly deepening system. I talked about this the last couple of days. Even if there's not a lot of cold air with this system, there's going to be so much dynamics with it as it drops off the coast here and then rapidly deepens, you'll see things flip over to snow pretty quickly. So with our heights lowering behind the storm, that cold air building in just because of the dynamic cooling of the atmosphere with all of the upward motion, all of the dynamics happening here, that snow could get heavy, I think, especially as we head into Tuesday. Now it is Friday, things will probably change. I'm gonna be tracking this all weekend, but just for kicks, how about we take a look at the European ensembles? I flashed it up just a moment ago. If you paid attention yesterday, these were all over the place. Look how everything is starting to solidify here into the northeast just a few outliers saying that it's not going to happen here but i do think this is the area for the heaviest snow again maybe a little bit too far south here don't know that we get much into philadelphia and this here into pennsylvania probably needs to come up just a little bit even back here into ohio and indiana but into the mountains some lighter snows here looking a little more likely and then in the heaviest right here into southern new england once this system moves by, we're not done with the storms. In fact, I think as we head towards President's Day weekend, that is a time period to watch. And also behind the system, it is going to be colder. There could likely be a clipper system that moves through. The last couple of model runs have showed that. And I think that could happen toward the late part of next week. So this is still seven days out. And right in here, I pointed this out last night as well. This is an area to watch. A lot of cold air. I mean, this is some very cold air moving in toward the 17th and 18th. So if we get this push of very strong high pressure, I mean, that is a 10, 45 millibar high pressure. Does it, is it going to be that strong? I don't know, but my goodness, the last couple of European ensembles have printed out these weeklies, a very cold pattern toward the end of the month. And I, I've been seeing this now for, for weeks. We've been talking about it for weeks. So I'm led to believe, yeah, this absolutely could happen. I showed you the NAO, the Arctic Oscillation, all negative. So yeah, we could get really cold. Now the GFS, once you get out here, we are looking at 207 hours. I mean, are we going to see snow down here in northern Mexico? I mean, probably not. But I, again, I like to watch the idea of what's happening. And this is a cold pattern. You're going to have storms here. Is this 1045 or whatever it is, millibar high, going to suppress everything? Maybe. But I think there are going to be more chances for winter weather over the next several weeks. So subscribe to keep you updated. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.